<laughs> Hello and welcome to our first episode of the podcast, A Talk with Salt. I'm Thiago. And I'm Marcus. And our Instagrams will be down below somewhere here, so take a look and check it out. And today we're going to talk about... How the English lang in language is not taken seriously in our countries. So, yeah, I think you know more of that than me because I'm not made any, any type of search about it. But what are your first impressions on this subject? Well, the first thing I think the, uh, the way that people learn English nowadays are completely wrong, especially when it comes to uh, in learning English in schools. Yeah. They tend to uh, focus on just one type of subject, one type of uh, learning, which is first grammar. Thing, grammar. First thing, yeah. And the problem is people, they end up not developing the their language skills, the, their speaking skills, anything. Listening. Sort, you know, listening, anything. anything. So uh, people, they just, they actually don't know English. They... They just know some they grammar just, some grammar rules parts, can, some grammar rules where, where you're gonna use it on a test or maybe yeah. uh, for translation on some uh, some kind of text that, that they used to translate. When I was uh, back in when I was way younger, like seven, eight years old. Yeah. When I was at school, what the teacher would do is she would come give us uh, a dictionary. Yeah. She would say, uh, just translate this text, and that's it. That's yeah. how we, 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 we learn English. It's a bad way to, to learn English because you're not going to develop anything. Maybe it's going to be enough for you to pass a test or something like that, but not to have a conversation like we are having right now. So, yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you. So nowadays, uh, the, the people, they, uh, they just know grammar. They don't know how to practice, how to... Uh, with English uh, in the usage, in the daily usage actually. And then what happens is uh, they, they or they have some really basic English where they can't... Uh, Maybe they answer can, uh, how are you and uh, where are you from or something like that. But Yeah, re can't. really simple things like that, yeah. yeah. And also what, uh, what I think what school should be teaching is a different way of of teaching like uh, they should focus more on the speaking first which is the way I believe I believe yeah. speaking is the first is the most important skill you should have developed first For it, is, sure. it is speaking and after you develop your speaking is your uh, reading and listening and then your grammar because I think the grammar was not made made for teaching for sure I think grammar is just made for making things more perfect, making making things better. It brings us back to that conversation we were having some months ago, I think, about how we should learn English. We should learn English like kids learn when they are developing their conversation skills. Yeah, definitely. When they are, uh, when you were born, you didn't learn grammar rules. When you start yeah. speaking part, you don't need grammar rules to to speak to someone. Yeah, and that's the point, man, because it's all based on grammar rules here, as you said. And do you do you think there's a way for us to improve this on schools or things like that? You mean if I think there there's a way to uh, change that? Well, yeah, because I don't know. Maybe I think that schools they are there just to earn some money, you know, they don't I also even think care. Because yeah. Yeah. their material is really poor, not, yeah. not just English, but it, also other uh, subjects, other, uh, other uh, different... Uh, but you were talking about basic and high school, isn't it? Basic and high school, yeah, sure. And what about English schools? Do you think yeah. they are basic as well, that they don't they don't have, they don't, I don't know, they don't teach the student the right way for them to become fluent. Maybe. Okay, yeah, sure. Oh, I, I think English, English schools are, are kind of more advanced than the normal schools, than yeah. uh, just high school, kindergarten, and, and all, all their, those stuff. 
but I think they uh, they still don't get as as strong as as strong as possible. They don't focus as uh, as they should on speaking skills. Yeah, it's usually totally grammar as well. It is more advanced grammar, but uh, it's that, still that's grammar. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean when I did an English course, when I went to an English course back then in 2014, 2015, uh, the one thing I realized is that my English was uh, better developed when it comes to uh, speaking, communication than even the professors, even the teacher. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, there was one teacher that, and she had a good English. And you could maybe talk to him? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. But the other one, that uh, that came in, in 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 her place. His English was not that good. It was yeah. really you know, really weird, slowly you know, kind of weird. And he had a lot of accent. Yeah, which is not a hundred percent a problem, but uh, yeah, it's not. It's not yeah. you can convey your message. Yeah, very very well. It's not. And then uh, when we started. We started by learning the uh, the grammar, the basic grammar rules like are, were, actually just uh, just yeah. present, yeah. Uh, and the way we we were training uh, speaking was through uh, quotes, phrases of a uh, scripted tasks text. Oh yeah. And uh, I mean, it's still not the right way. The right way would be like. What do you know? What do you know of the English? Okay, you know, you know this, this, and that, and the other person this, this, and that. So we should try and make a natural conversation in English without so any can, scripts, anything. It's the best way for them to to improve, yeah. Yeah. Because they have to force their their brains to mm -hmm. think in English. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's another point. People they tend to think in Portuguese before and before in English. Yeah, yeah. They, they try they try to translate the uh, the words. They try to think, but the thing is, our brain processes the language is in a different way. For sure, because uh, the contexts are different. The way the words are put together are different. Like in Portuguese, you use usually like if it is an adjective. The adjective goes uh, later, uh, like uh, let's say a beautiful dress in Portuguese would be a dress beautiful. It would be uh, in a different way. Yeah. So uh, people they uh, they start thinking slowly. They they need to process this first, and this happens because they they tend to think in Portuguese before speaking English. Yeah, that slows your learning very much, you know, come on. If you are still doing that, you should think about a way to stop doing that. Because it will help you a lot to sound more natural when speaking English. Mm -hmm. Or any other language, man. That's, yeah, any kind of a language. Yeah, that's a natural process. You have to stop thinking on your native language in order to be a good speaker of English or anything. And also there... This is a problem with uh, today's society. Yeah. Uh, people they don't put things into practice. They they just keep on yeah. theory, 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 theory and they theory, don't, yeah. don't practice it. And yeah. nowadays it's even easier for you to practice. Maybe you can and only open up Omigo and try to talk to someone, and that's it. Yeah, you can find it. Maybe There's you don't have the money to pay for it, and you can try Omigo. Yeah. That's it. You, and you don't worry about a thing. There is no problem in making mistakes. That's normal. I still make mistakes every time. So yeah, even so. when you when you're speaking, there's another rule. If you're too formal, you're gonna be a boring person when when you're yeah. speaking to someone else. Because formality is just used, let's say, on a uh, job inter interview. Yeah. Or any any sort of a. Uh, formal occasion so uh, formality is just for that and if you're too informal like if you say uh, anything even the most basic things you say wrongly 
then people are gonna think that you you don't know a lot about English. So you should have a medium between not being too informal, not being too formal. That's the thing. So you're gonna make mistakes, and mm -hmm. you're gonna learn from that. Don't try to be over formal. Don't try to be more formal than, than you, you think. Yeah, be, yeah, than you need to be. Yeah, sure. And there's something else I want to add because. Americans also make a lot of mistakes because they are not very they are not caring about the grammar man. They are just speaking yeah, sure. so they make a lot of mistakes every time. And why would you be a robot and try to be 100% correct when you don't need to be? Yeah. So that would This is totally point. true also. Uh, I saw a guy today saying she don't uh, instead of she doesn't. Yeah, and sure. Like, yeah, Actually there there's a there's a song called uh, she my mama don't something. It is a song from uh, Justin 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 Bieber. Oh yeah, I don't know. This I don't know this dude. But, uh, song, but yeah, I don't. I don't know this song, but uh, I remember mm -hmm. when a friend of mine wrote this this title. And Grammarly, it is, it is incorrect. Totally incorrect. Yeah. But never mind. We're gonna still use it, so no problem. So maybe you are overthinking something you should not. Yeah. And also another thing is that uh, there's the black English, which is yeah, it's completely different. No, not completely yeah, different, it, but but it is a, an informal English. Yeah, they have they, a lot they, of they tend to speak a lot of things in a different way that is wrong, grammatically speaking. Uh, so like uh, they uh, use uh, contractions in some places. They. Uh, they change the R, they, they usually use the, the is, in, instead of saying they are, they, they say uh, they is. They is, yeah. And there's a lot of more details in that, that is, sure. uh, that we might not be a lot of really familiar with because we, we don't uh, use that much. Yeah. We use some things of the Black English. When I uh, first started learning English, I started learning by playing the video game, the the game called Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And oh yeah, of course, the first thing I learned was the bad words. I think the bad words are the first. Yeah, it's normal. It's, they are the first thing we notice. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the bad time. words is the is a great start for learning English. Yeah, yeah you, you gotta learn how to curse. Yeah, man, that's normal. And then, yeah, uh, good point. That's yeah. really good point. Just go. And then there is also another thing, which is my personal experience. And then this is uh, when I w when I started learning English, I uh, had some kind of emotional learning. What do you mean? Uh, emotional uh, learning. I think I got what you mean, but try to explain it. Well, uh, I always liked the uh, United States, the movies. Oh yeah, I got it. So I had this thing in my mind, I I made this kind of a, a movie, you know, uh, the, the environment, I transformed everything into, in, into a different environment. And this environment helped me develop my English. Yeah. And I actually, uh, when I started uh, going to the English course, the English helped me with that. For her. Because the walls, it had wallpapers of uh, New York, you know, so I I liked going to the uh, English course because I liked that, you know, the environment, the environment. I uh, transformed everything into into an English environment, like I was in the United States, you know, like it was Ooh, yeah. so uh, cool. walking around Times Square, doing something. This helped me a lot, so one important thing to learning English is and any other language is immerse yourself into the language. For sure. My way was with was through the emotional learning, uh, and I think this is a pretty effective way of learning it. Yeah, I think so. And by the way, I think that you need to have an important, an important why. You know, why are you learning English? Sure, you you gotta have a purpose. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to learn English for money. I wanted to learn English because I loved it. Because since I am a child, my my parents they used to listen to American British songs, and it was every time in English. So I kind of fell in love with the English language, 
and I wanted to learn it. So fuck it, I did it. <laughs> what? Yeah, sure. And uh, well, the first time when I got in contact with English, I liked the, I liked le the language way better than I liked Portuguese. Uh, I don't know why. I nowadays I prefer speaking English than Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happens, but so maybe that emotional feeling that you have. Probably, yeah. Yeah, you still. I want to go to the U.S. so bad. I think you. Yeah, yeah. So. I do too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, well, that's awesome. And if I was going to learn another language, like now I want to learn German, and German, I think I'm yeah. going to start, but. I don't have this emotional connection that I have when I'm learning English. English, yeah, sure. Yeah, so it's kind of harder for me to start and keep doing it. Sure, yeah. Because I don't feel the same as when I'm studying English, and I don't know why and how I can create this emotional connection. Well, oh, psychologically speaking, your emotions are totally connected to your uh, uh, performance, to your, uh, your will to doing something. So uh, when you have a uh, an emotion about something, let's say you get a, you get happy about doing something, you're gonna want to do that more often. Yeah, and that happens with language as well. People uh, people who have who have this this kind of connection, this emotional connection, they don't really stop learning. They uh, they always come and go and. They try to learn everything uh, differently, everything uh, in the right way because they. I think they don't care about grammar first in, in the first place. Yeah. They start just by living in, you know, like I said, transforming the environment into an English environment. And, uh, well, now we just, you asked how. You can create your connection, your emotional connection with the, with the German language. Um, yeah, it's kind of difficult, man. Well, I think the first thing is you like you you like uh, like war, uh, shooting games. Yes, yeah. I thought about German because my ancestors came yeah, sure. from German and Italy, so those were my two options. Okay, but still, I don't know. And yeah, I like studying subjects like World War II and things like that, sure. so this kind of brings a feeling, but not as strong as in English. Okay, so for starters, what about, what if you change your, uh, any, I, I, I assume you play uh, Call of Duty. Oh yeah. You still play? Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, you know the Call of Duty uh, WW2, World War II? The one that was launched in uh, was back in 2016, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I never I, played that one, but yeah, I, I know which one we're talking about. Well, I, I think for starters, you should uh, pick it up. Anything that is related to uh, something related to the German culture, uh, like uh, war, the the, the war. second war, the, the World War Two. Yeah. Uh, maybe you should pick a game and change the language to German. I think that's the first thing you should do. Oh, that would be cool, man. I'll yeah. Try it. Now, the second thing you, you gotta find another thing that it, that connects you to the German. Like for me personally, uh, there is the track called Nurburgring, which is a race track. Oh yeah. It is the oh. the largest track. It has twenty four point four kilometers of uh, Come on. distance. It's really large and uh, really long, actually. And uh, that that would be my first connection to the to the German English. If I were to learn to learn German, I would go first into racing. And also, there are, there are which racing, is, which is also something that you love. So yeah, yeah. Would be there is also racing legends like uh, Walter Royal. You know this guy. He's he was a rally driver from the Group B uh, from uh, nineteen eighty two, I think. Uh, he was an a spectacular driver. Oh, yeah. His his way of driving was just Fantastic. out of this awesome. world. Yeah. yeah. So you gotta find a second connection. Allow well, now. I I I don't know how you could find it because yeah. this is something really personal. Yeah, it is. Uh, 
I'd say the first thing is war, something related to war. Yeah, it's the first thing that pops out in our heads. Yeah. yeah. Now you gotta find a second thing. I don't know. Uh, Anything? Maybe. What could maybe music? music I don't know. Maybe if yeah. you like some some kind of a German music. I've never tried it, but I don't, yeah, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know any German songs. Yeah. Yeah. Try the national anthem of, the, of Germany. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <That's> like <laughs> you little... should try this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like it. That's a good tip, man. And you should apply it as well. Yeah. Even you should do it too. Yeah. It doesn't matter what is the language you're gonna learn. If it is English, try something like that. Also, I think there's another thing uh, that helps me uh, with English that is related to the emotional learning, and it is movies. Oh yeah. Uh, one thing that I always also did oftenly was repeating movie quotes. I did that all the time as well. Yeah, this actually makes you learn without even thinking. If you if you try to learn grammar, you're gonna try to memorize it, the rules. Yeah. And what 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 is gonna happen? You're gonna be worried about those rules, and you're gonna end up forgetting in the in the in the, in the end because you you didn't absorb that. Yeah, properly. you didn't absorb properly. Yeah. So uh, when you get some kind of a movie quote you memorize that quote yeah and also you're gonna see patterns applying to other words like uh say hello to my little friend say hello to my little friend from little Scarface. Friend, yeah. yeah sure awesome. uh like uh, my little you're gonna see that my is a possessive so we you, you can use it to uh my house anything you're gonna relate that sub subconsciously you're, you're not gonna notice so this is one is important step to learning English. Yes, yeah, for well. sure. And I would add up something else. When you are learning, you know, learning a quote or something like that, you should also think about the context and the emotion that the guy's feeling because True. that way you're going to absorb that way better. Yeah, sure. You're going to absorb the emotion and you're going to try repeat the, repeating the emotion. Yeah, yeah that's sure. something I did all the time. Sure, this is true, yeah. yeah. Somehow that helped me. And every time that I was reading, I was trying to, you know, get a picture of the scene that was happening on on the books. Yeah. On the books, yeah. yeah. Sure. So I think that improved my English to another level. I don't know. Sure. And uh, well, for starters, this is what you you're supposed to do. And then after that, you're gonna focus. You can focus on grammar. I think after you you dominate. Uh, listening, uh, speaking, conversation, conversation. Yeah. you can focus on, on grammar so you, you're gonna know when to use the grammar and when when you're, you're not supposed to use it this is the big point of grammar being formal in the right decisions, in the right uh, moments. moments, yeah places maybe yeah, in the right places, moments any sort of situation, formal situation yeah um, well, uh, I think that 80%, 90% of the time you're going to be informal. Everyone is. Yeah, most of the time you're going to be informal. Yeah, sure. Even even at work, you're going you're to... Once enough. you get familiar with, with the people that you're wor working with, uh, yeah. you're, you're going to be speaking differently. You're, you're going to be uh, informal. It's... It's natural, of of course. If you're on the jobs inter interview, yeah, uh, on a big meeting or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's when you're gonna use your formal English, but you don't need to. Yeah, most of the time. And yeah, do do you have anything else to add for the subject? Well, uh, let me think here. Uh, I think uh, also uh, learning English with uh, music. Oh yeah, it's a great way of uh, of trying to develop your uh, emotional attachment to the language. I think so. I think that. Yes, yeah, so do I. Because this is, this is another thing that that also helped me uh, develop my English. I I actually I don't listen to any song that is uh, saying in Portuguese. Yeah, I just don't like the language. Right. I, don't, I don't think it fits properly on on on, on music. So uh, 
I have always had this emotional attachment. One thing that is always get gets me is the eighties. I think the eighties was a prime time of uh, of any any sort of uh, music and in general of music, mm -hmm. pop, fun funk. Yeah, which is which is not Brazilian funk. It's totally different from Brazilian funk. Totally different. Yeah, the American funk is really great. If you just search it on the on the internet, just search it uh, American funk, '80s funk, '70s funk, and you're gonna see how different it is from the Brazilian funks. And uh, and uh, and not also that, but I think that uh, that the '80s was was the peak of uh, good men. I, not not just I'm music. Not really music. I think that was the peak of mankind performance. I think uh, movies. Never kind of way. All, all the movies that were uh, produced in, in the eighties were they are memorable in in some kind of way, like uh, say hello to my little friends. It, yeah. That's a quote from from a uh, Scarface. Classics, man. Yeah, yeah, it's a quote from Scarface, and and all sorts of different movies. Uh, a series as well, like uh, Miami Vice. Have you watched Miami any? Vice? No, I'm not. It is a spectacular series about uh, uh, police, uh, police investigations. Oh, really? Like the, uh, it is two undercover cops. They are in undercover with uh, some kind of a criminal uh, drug drug dealing uh, mafia or some some kind of that some sort of thing like that. And I think the Star Wars was released on the 80s. The 80s, yeah. 83, isn't it? 1880. Sorry, which 1983. One the first one, Star Wars. Oh, the War. first Star Wars. I'm not yeah. really sure, yeah. Yeah, it was released on the, in the 80s. Yeah, I, I think it was. For yeah. sure. The first one, yeah. And many people don't like it, many, many people didn't watch it, but at that moment it mm -hmm. blew. It was a goat, but and also, like I said, it was a peak performance for humankind. It's because, like, uh, it was everything. Like racing, for instance. I'm a big racing fan. I, yeah, I love rally, uh, track racing, any kind, any sort of racing. And I think that uh, it was peak performance because we had here in Brazil we had Ayrton Senna. Yeah. At this time, 1980 something, we 1983, had. four, five. Uh, those Formula One cars that were nearly uh, impo impossible to a normal human being to control those cars, because yeah, because those cars they they had more than a, a thousand horsepower. Yeah, they didn't have any traction control, any ABS or any any kind of uh, uh, security uh, measure for uh, the pilot. Yeah, yeah, for for the driver and. Uh, and uh, he he did it greatly. Like, uh, did you know that he won a race? It was his first time where he won a race here in Interlagos in Brazil, hmm. where he he won the, the, his first championship here. It was uh, he was racing. He was in first place, and then suddenly, uh, two or three gears stopped working. Didn't work. It wasn't. He couldn't shift to the next year. Oh, so he only he, he he came to a moment where he, where he only had the last year, which was the sixth year, and he he managed to control the car, to tame the car during turns with the 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 sixth gear engaged. And I gotta say, it's pretty hard because the RPMs drop when you're when you're a, 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 at a lower speed yeah. with a high gear. The the RPMs will drop and being and cornering fast, with the RPMs too low. The cars, the car is gonna feel heavier. Yeah. The weight of the car is gonna be looser. So it's gonna require a lot more of strength. strength. To, yeah. To control the car. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and when he uh, finished the race, he uh, he didn't manage to uh, lift the tr his trophy because Ooh. he was too too damaged. You know, his his muscles were hurt. Oh, swelling, yeah. you know. Oh, I think I, s I saw that scene. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. I'd say that's big performance of the humankind in in rally. Like I said, Group B, Group B rally was was an area of rally where uh, it didn't have any restrictions to uh, yeah. power. 
so cars could have 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower and uh, also the public, the, the people that were watching the races, they would gather around the, the track yeah. all together and the driver wouldn't have any sort of uh, space to make a mistake. Oh, I saw some videos you showed me. Yeah. He, that's insane. I don't know how how those people didn't die there. Yeah. He, if, because, oh God. if the driver made, made one simple mistake, he would kill like two, three people, maybe, maybe even more. more. And, yeah. and get and get like 20 people injured yeah and that actually happened once just once the the area that's in, amazing just once man how yeah how the the, the driver he was with a uh, ford rs 200 and he was coming to the turn like 180 kilometers i think and he lost control and, oh. and, and he ran over uh I think 10 people I think and from the 10 three three got killed oh, come on. and two were were were, were, like, were children and one other was an adult so uh, oh, that's yeah. why I think the 80s was the peak performance for anything any sort of uh, activity that the humankind managed to do that's a really good point I've never thought about it and I think we can put a short of a group B, a group B race. Yeah, we can. Yeah, those sure. guys. Not an accident, but a short. I think it'll be good for you guys to see how insane those guys are and how skilled they are. Yeah, how skilled they are. They. Yeah, they were almost perfect drivers. Ritt durchs Niemandsland der Physik. And also, there there was a woman among those drivers. One of the Ooh. drivers was a woman. That's insane, especially on 1980s. Yeah, she was the only one woman among those drivers, and she was really good as well. He, oh, yeah. She managed to win, I think, three or four championships. Oh. She managed to do the uh, the shortest time. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, back at that time, then. Oh, come on. So, yeah, I think we said that we are going to do 30 minutes, so we're yeah. going to, so well, think, to an end. Yeah, I think we can wrap this up. And, uh, Let's go, man. So, I hope that you guys liked it. And we're going to come back next, next week. Uh, yeah, probably next week. Next week, yeah, sure, probably. Yeah. So, keep tuned because we're going to release a new podcast every week. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, keep tuned for new episodes and check the description for our Instagrams. And that's it, guys. Yeah, see you later. See you on the next one.